Ah, greetings one and all. Christine, I hope you get sorted out. You need a refresh or something like that. And I absolutely love it that Jen is uh, referring to my humble pond as a lake. Yes. I think Jill must have got a good camera angle there. You're also going to go greetings, everybody, one and all. Am I glad to see you. Fantastic. Is it a special day? What day is it? 35 days. Somebody's saying it's a special day. Every day is a special day. We're down in the snake pit in the back garden here in rural North Lincolnshire. Looking forward to your company. Me and Super Joe and Sally all primed to bring you some mellow tunes. And oh, Christine, you're back with us. Absolutely fantastic. I say a huge thank you to uh, some uh, generous, lovely souls, Robert Isles, to Richard, to Stella, to Brian Anderson, and um, big hi to Ruth and Peter over in Murfield. And uh, thank you very much. Now, we've changed a few things around tonight. <coughs> we'll talk about that in a minute. But, um, the, the donation system has changed a little bit. It's changed in the description under the video where it usually is but the description has changed and uh, if you're chucking money and don't be dismayed by a box which says username you just put any old thing in there at what you'd like to appear on the screen biffo the bear anything and you, there's no login and there's no uh, signing up required it's just a slightly different system uh, you can always go over to the website donate there or send us mince pies or broccoli scones or um, 20 pound notes or put money in our bank we'll always find, we'll always find a way to get your money <laughs> we're musicians we play for food or anything um, stones sometimes yak sent me a beautiful stone where is it oh it's outside now i've got it it's kind of proudly at the entrance to the snake pit to the to the zen den ah oh, right i want to play i want to play and uh, this is for Christine and Pat and anybody else who likes a bit of sort of cool reggae with a slight banger edge and the flute. And ah, this one first came out on the uh, Snake Bites CD. And uh, Pat and Christine spotted a, some random YouTube video of me playing it and uh, commented on the leather trousers, which of course I've got on tonight, especially for the occasion. You'll never find out because the camera never goes as far as my trousers. <laughs> oh dear. It's called breathing. Breathing. <laughs> Thank you. 
getting used to the live fades now. So Davis Mowat composition, wrote that with my good friend Will Mowat. And uh, yeah, it's an old one, but I still enjoy it a lot. It just raises its head every now and again, like an old friend. Great stuff. Now, um, last night, I promised you, because I believed it was going to happen, I promised that Gareth would be with us. But um, he's not going to be with us tonight, so we'll look forward to him ASAP, as soon as possible. His car broke down on the M62. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, that's the old days. That's the old normal. The new normal is that technical stuff, my end, uh, some gremlins in the, in the, my software, and uh, the hookup wasn't hooking. So we'll do that as soon as we can, but not tonight. So instead of that, I think um, my old buddy, the Cheltenham champ, Robin Smith's going to pop in for one, and uh, some dodgy guitar busker that we uh, was passing in the end of the street, and we pulled him in. He might drop by. I hope not, actually. He looked, he looked a bit dodgy. Anyway, lots of tunes. But I know you're dying you die, <laughs> die for me to tell you about the new shirt, aren't you? Ta-da! First new shirt of lockdown. And Sally's been that busy helping us, helping me and Joe put all this together, and then making masks. She's been, it's been a, like like a little cottage industry up there in the uh, dining room, churning the masks out for a Driffield Medical Centre. And uh, oh, Millie and the cat. First donation on the new system. Thank you so much. And any chance for a billion loves, love songs sometime? There's always a downside. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, I'll put it on the request list. We ought to do it. I ought to do it. I talk about it from time to time, don't I? My big hit. Well, I'll take that we're involved as well. But million love songs. I will play that for you one day. I'm going to put it on the request list at the end of the show and scratch my head and wonder how best to do it. So I don't think I'm going to get Gary Barlow on. Um, we'll find a way. So I was telling you about the new shirt and uh, I'm really pleased with it. Sally says it's Marmite. You know, love it or hate it. Well, I love it. I'm going to try and... Uh, <laughs> there you go. And uh, so she got... Um, oh, you're already talking about the new shirt. Look, even before me. Amazing. Ian and Judith, you were late, but um, that's fine. Ian and Judith over in Bealby, wonderful musicians too. Judith taught me a beautiful song that I used with um, primary school choirs. Nanuma we nanuma. It's just one word and it goes round and around. It's beautiful. When I, th when I sing that song, I think of Judith. And when I see Judith's name, I think of that song. Music is beautiful. Music goes round like that. Ah. Uh, so, she is indeed a woman of many talents, let me tell you. I think, Sally, I think you've made a tour of Masu as well, haven't you, babe, tonight? <laughs> Come on, you gotta, will it rival Elaine's broccoli scones? That's what I want to know. So, and then she had this idea, she's always having ideas, that with some of the spare material, the leftover material, she makes things <laughs> that you lot might want to have in your collections. And can I show you those things? Well, there's the shirt hanging up. And then, look, <laughs> can you work out what that is? Those are scrunchies for your hair, which will be getting long by now, I reckon. And fridge magnet buttons, which are really beautiful. And uh, Oh, yeah. <laughs> and there's... There they are, stuck on our whiteboard, which is full of crossed out gigs that aren't going to happen anymore. Where would I have been tonight? Oh, I'm not going to, not even going to think about it. Um, so yeah. Oh, oh, and uh, just put them on eBay already, haven't you? Have you? <laughs> and I think the details are on our Facebook page, the Snake Davis Facebook. I don't really get Facebook. All right, back 
to normal. I have an artist page, but I don't have a normal me page. I think that means you can't be my friend. <laughs> so I've got no friends. <laughs> oh dear, but I don't know. I never got it really. I mean, I accept it's useful. Anyway, you know, to speak your mind, if it's Sally thinks it's Marmite. Not everybody likes Marmite. We want to know. Moshi Moshi John. How are you doing there? North of the border. Yeah. What shall I play now? Oh, I know. Let's see if Robin's around. My mate Robin Smith, very posh musician. He works with them all, you know. Lots of posh classical people. That Bocelli, Andrea Bocelli. The two cellos, those two good-looking fellas. He does them as well. And he did that Welsh singer, I can't remember her name now. Welsh opera singer, classical singer, not opera singer, classical singer. Her name will come to me in the middle of something. Blonde air. Oh, he does them all. The Cheltenham champ. Uh, I need the tiddler. The curved soprano. And then sometimes he does me as well. Lovely little gig we do down in Cheltenham. Chapel Arts. And when we reopen for business, I'll get him up here. But meanwhile, we communicate down the wire. I need this as well. Make sure it's warmed up. Yep, that'll do. The humble tin whistle and the tiddly sax. A piece called the Sally Gardens. Are you there, mate? Uh, the a oh, beautiful hey. piece, uh, which is called Down by the Sally Gardens. Beautiful piece indeed. Uh, traditional ish folk, English folk song. Or oh, British. Thank you. 
Beautiful. What a man, the Cheltenham champ. That is a stunning piece, traditional English. Uh, I might need this again later with a different length body. So I'm going to do that now because it's it's called the S Down by the Salle Gardens, spelled S-A-L-L-E-Y, the Salle Gardens. Really lovely. We shall release that one day. Record it and release it. So I'm going to change this body now because it's an absolute horrible experience when you strike up with the wrong whistle. Not good. Oh, I was all a bit rushed today because um, rescheduling because of um, trying and trying and failing with, with Gareth. And uh, so I... I make test recordings to make sure everything's kind of set up and going. <laughs> and <laughs> when I was doing that, and there was there was clattering all over the place. There's whistles were falling on the floor, and uh, thank goodness we got there. And now <sighs> we're calm. <laughs> Honestly, we are. Cheers to that. Cheers to being calm. Oh, after the uh, after the concert last night, a friend of mine who lives over in Canada but used to live in York, Brendan Rothwell, he sent me a recording of he and I playing together in my band. He stood in for, for, for one night for my regular bass player in the Jazz Cafe in Camden. And uh, I don't know where he got the recording from. It's not the best, you know, you wouldn't, you wouldn't put it on a CD, but you can hear everything and... Uh, Oh, I sat there. It was, there were tunes that I couldn't remember ever playing, and uh, stop, look, listen to your heartbeat. That's that's like a seventies kind of Philadelphia kind of thing, isn't it? I can't remember who did that. The stylistics, maybe, but I remembered it once. I listened to it, honest. Oh, yeah, and somebody identified that the uh, singer I was searching for the name of was um, Catherine Jenkins. Yeah. Hmm, I might keep this on. I might need it next. Uh, I see Jane and David Petrie are out there missing you guys at the rope walk. Well, and here. But at least we can we can do this and connect. Hello, Helen. Hello, Annie down in Devon. Uh, hi, Brian. <laughs> John Morton is after um, Top of the Pops theme tune A Whole Lot of Love the King Curtis version that is a fantastic track I couldn't do that on a Sunday night John that would be sacrilege but I would like to do that that's a oh, Sally said I'm not to accept any more challenges but you know I will but I'm still working on your dream not your dream but the dream and I did find another King Curtis one that I thought I could do, the Soul Serenade, which I absolutely love. And I found um, I found a backing track that I could use, which is quite groovy. So that's on my list. And I know you'll like that one, John. But a whole lot of love. Yeah, that'll be good too. <coughs> Hi, Chris. <laughs> so talking of challenges. Um, as we were. You know, sometimes requests come in and they're, you know, they're reasonably easy because uh, I already know them, people who you requested them because you've heard me doing them. But occasionally I get requests in, well, like the whole lot of love is a good example, but this is a more extreme example of what I is about to tell you about. A tune that I've never heard of, never heard, and then when I hear it, I can't work out how to do it. But, the challenge. I took the challenge because it's a very special occasion. And uh, Joan, John and I 
would like to wish you a very happy 77th birthday. And 77 is the new 49. So you're still a mere spring chicken. And John is the uh, president of the um, Eastbourne Division of the Snake Davis Fan Club. So he tells me. It sounds good to me. And uh, I just saw the word Eastbourne there and I just remembered I'm going to drop a big name here. Last time I was in Eastbourne, I was at Paul McCartney's house, I think, unless I've got the wrong town, recording a tune. So they challenged me <coughs> to play Joan's favourite tune. <coughs> I hope I've got the right one because there's a few tunes called this. But um, I think it'll do for you anyway. And uh, this is where we got the uh, the dodgy the dodgy busker in. You'll see him. It's called Romancer. Look, there it is. Look, written out by my own fair typing. Right, how do I do this? I know how I do this. And this is where that dodgy uh, guitar player comes in as well. Happy birthday, John. Well, did you see that guitar player's face? <laughs> oh, dear. I hope you didn't. Hit. I've, I've tried to keep him as quiet as possible. <laughs> uh, for obvious reasons. I do not think that um, 
John Williams or Julian Bream will be shaking in their boots tonight. So I wanted to show you the uh, the offending article because um, <laughs> I found it up in a roof, and uh, I have not touched this for probably thirty years. I bought it when I was thirteen in a junk shop in Newport in South Wales, and uh, over the years, all three kids have had a go at it. Most recently, Letty made it into a, an ornament. It was on the wall in one of her London houses with uh, fairy lights around it for quite a few years. And uh, I was amazed that it had six strings on. It only has five uh, machine heads. Um, but a one can tune it with, um, with pliers. So I, <laughs> I made it work, sort of. But um, I do hope that was the right tune. I'm just looking to see if there was any. Yeah, well, John was John's happy. Yeah, okay. Because <laughs> you thought at first the dodgy guitar player was Paula Grady. Yeah, I don't suppose he's any better than me. <laughs> oh, I see. It was the white shirt, wasn't it? Um. <laughs> So I looked up this tune that, that John mentioned and uh, the version that I found was by Andrea Bocelli or was it? and uh, it was a little bit kind of, um, a little bit sentimental. Um, and I wasn't sure about it. And then I found another tune with the same name by John Williams. I thought I'd better check on this. So I checked, and it was the John Williams one. So then that's when I went and got the guitar out of, of the attic. And then I was flipping, driving, Sally Mo, dong, ding, dong, dong, ding. And, uh, but then just yesterday I found there was two, there was another tune also by John Williams Cook with the same title, Romanza. And I thought, what's he giving it, this fellow? But I thought, oh, I've got to stick with this one now. <laughs> I'm, I'm, you know, I've got to stick with it, so... I'm guessing it was the right one. They look happy. You got yours from Oxbridge for 14 quid when you were 13 years old. Uh, yeah, I think that was about what that one was. Anyway, it's going back in the attic tomorrow. You'll be pleased to, and relieved to hear. <laughs> that reminded me, having nearly learned the wrong song. Well, I did start sort of getting my head around it. Because first of all, you listen and then you think what instrument and how you do it and all that kind of thing. So I hadn't actually started working on it. I started assimilating it before I sent John the email. And it, it did remind me of um, uh, a gala concert I did many years ago at the Royal Albert Hall, I'll have you know. with It was for um, it was celebrating the careers of uh, Burt Bacharach and Hal David. And there were a host of... Um, most of names they're playing, each playing one song. There was um, my beautiful friend Sumadu, there was Paul Carrick, there was Edwin Starr, Petula Clark, Dion Warwick, and um, Boomtown Rats guy who does festivals. I can't remember his name either. Um, anyway, I'm mentioning no names specifically, but one of them did turn up to rehearsal, having learned not only the wrong song, but it wasn't even a Bacharach and David song. We were, we were the house band, by the way, so we were in rehearsal for two or three days as they all trooped in with the sheets of paper and did their one song and then moved off for the next person to come in. So we did chuckle at that. We did. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, But people do seem to like to challenge me. I tour Japan a lot, as you know, and quite often I go in and do a morning radio show in Tokyo, um, with Mike and Taro, and uh, somehow they found that it was a bit of fun just getting me to bring my sax and then playing any old record and say, telling me to play along with it. <laughs> and uh, it was a laugh, actually. It was good. They never really, you know, they never... I never came a cropper. Always rose to it. 
I think. It's a while ago too. Uh, so I might I might play that again one day, that romance thing. I like the way it goes sort of from from minor to major or oh, I sang it in the wrong key, but you know, it's got a sad bit and then it goes all the sun comes out and then it goes wistful again and drifts off and yeah. Makes you want to be in Tuscany and have a glass of Chianti. Does it? Does me. <laughs> Thank you, Ian. You are too kind. If you'd listened to it on its own, I don't think you'd have said that. Oh, you glasses are on the on your second glasses already. I should be joining you before long. But I think we should have a song. Some vocals, a sing along. I know my way. Not that one. <laughs> That'd be nice to do with us all doing a round. Let's do um, My Buddy Jeremy Bradford from Otley. Sends me l- lovely tracks. He sits at home on the piano and thinks, This is what Snakey and the gang ought to be playing or singing. And he sends them through. So we haven't done this for a few weeks. Where is it? You all know this. Except, I don't know the proper title either, but it's it's the Blooming Heather. That's what it is, the Blooming Heather. trees are sweetly blooming and the wild mountain town grows around the blooming heather will you go lassie go come on and we'll all Pick the wild mountain in time All around the blooming heaven Will you go and see
Good singing, y'all. See, I was trying to get a bit more whistling at the end, but I couldn't hear you loud enough. So I thought I better keep the singing going. <laughs> Distractions? What, what are you getting distracted about? <laughs> so I'll put the whistle away now. So just in case you were late to the party tonight, I was explaining at the beginning that Young Joe has set up a new donation system. And if you are choosing to drop money into that particular tip jar, don't be put off by the fact that it's, there's a box saying username. You do not need to register or sign up to anything at all. That's um, just how you would like your name to appear on the screen and to us. So it could be... Um, Tom or Jerry or Biffo the Bear or your real name, whatever. You were singing in Croft. Fantastic. Uh, Pauline, bet you were singing. Love your picture. <laughs> now, Ernie, are you being a bit sarcastic there? I'll tell you what, I'll play it again. I'll solo the guitar and then you, you won't say that. Ah, somebody's getting technical. Ah, am I using a harper whistle? I am indeed. Yeah, I used to live in the next village to Steve Harper. Fantastic whistle maker. And uh, he made walking sticks and guns as well. <laughs> but I was only interested in the whistles. Gorkot he lived in. And uh, <coughs> so we're getting all nerdish and techy now, but we will stop. But so you get one head and two or three bodies to fit it so you can play in different keys. And I kept going back to him and asking for whistles in funny keys because I was playing with um, a, a girl band at the time called Bewitched and they were playing beautiful sort of uh, Irish tinged, they were all Irish but they were playing pop music they were one of the first girl bands really so they were playing l lovely songs but they didn't know that, well I say they didn't know, I'm being sarcastic but they didn't obey the traditional rules of playing in the keys of D and G so I kept going back to Steve and said, can you make me one an E-flat? He goes, what do you want to play an E-flat for? I said, because the girls want me to. And, uh, and that was the gig where I got to go to Los Angeles with only a whistle and didn't have to have all the arguments about not being able to take my sax into the cabin and all that. Just a whistle in my top pocket. Oh, it was awesome. Anyway, enough tech and, and rambling. <laughs> Ernie, yeah, well, let's go back and re-record everything with me on guitar. Yeah. It's a beautiful instrument, the tin whistle. Overlooked, I think. Underplayed. I think school kids should play whistles instead of recorders because the recorder is responsible for so many crimes against music, isn't it? Recorder's difficult. The whistle's just a little bit easier. You just breathe into it and don't blow too hard. <laughs> I've got a couple of haikus for you. They're all mine tonight. I don't think I've got any uh, any donations of haikus. So. I wasn't sure if I'd recited these to you before or not. Anyway, it doesn't matter. I'm going to do them again. <laughs> this is the first one about the dreaming, all that dreaming that goes on. Dreaming continues. Increasingly unusual. What will tonight bring? Sally's been having some crazy ones. She was having to sign up to something. I can't remember what it was. And this one's a br this is brand new. I just came up with this one yesterday. Not that it's any good. No. Physical distance takes some getting used to, but will not harm friendship. I was in. I needed to cheer myself up, being fed up of not seeing my friends, you know, in person. But and then. Uh, and then here's Posh, I did a couple in Japanese. So I am learning Japanese, you know. Although it's a slow process at my age. Um, and this first one is about um, 
This is, you know how important the cherry blossom is to the Japanese and to me and to you. And when it's faded away, it's a bit of a sad feeling. And all the blossom has gone round here now. I don't know about your seasons where you are, but the last petals have dropped now, really, haven't they? And so um, there's a word for blue, for viewing the blossoms in Japanese. It's hanami. And it's from the two words. Hana is the word for flower and mimas is the word to see or to look. So hanami is a bona fide word which means cherry blossom viewing. I love that. <laughs> Every language should have a word for cherry blossom viewing. So that's the first word of this haiku and it's about the um, it's about the beauty of the blossoms. Hanami shitai desu. Yoshino osakajo ichiban kirei which translates as, I want to view the cherry blossom in Yoshino in at Osaka Castle. That's where it's the most beautiful, which is true, and I have done in the past, but I missed it this year, for obvious reasons. And then one about my experience of um, touring and rehearsing in Japan, especially the first bit. <coughs> it's pretty much as soon as you get there, you get off the plane, you get the rest of the day to recover and then you're straight into the rehearsal studio the next day with the, with the band mostly from America and some of them are Japanese and it's straight to work and you've got the jet lag and you're confused and you've got all these new tunes to learn with Japanese lyrics and uh, so uh, I'll give you this one in <laughs> Japanese <and then laughs> oh Michelle I found that. I'll give you this one in Japanese then I'll translate it for you so motto nemui it translates as, I'm so tired. Today is such a long day, but tomorrow is a holiday. So, nagai means long. And they're not such long days, but there's no daylight in there, and you're kind of nodding off. Ah, oh, from Gox Hill. Thank you, Carolyn. Thank you so much. Oh, it's exciting to see them flash over the screen. Easily pleased. Um, that's that's my last uh, hike. <laughs> You'll be glad to hear. Um, but yeah, we, we call it we call it the dungeon, the rehearsal studio, because <laughs> it's below ground and there's no. It's actually a really lovely studio, but it's below ground with no daylight, and it does get hot. Might hit a tune called Stillness. It's one from the Time Stands Still, the, the new album. Still feels very new. Um, and uh, it's all, uh, I know a lot of you got it. It's all mellow and floaty. And this is, uh, this is one, ah, recorded in Japan. At the end of the last tour, towards the end, I, I got the. Um, the male members of the band to all join me in this little side room that that I found, and I, I set up my recording gear. The mic was perched on a suitcase and gaffered to it, and the laptop was precariously placed on um, a waste paper basket. And I just grabbed them between the sound check and and uh, tea time. Sound check finishes at about three forty-five, and then tea is at five. <laughs> and then we play so ridiculously early. We play at six thirty sometimes in Japan. Um, and five o'clock on a weekend. <sighs> it's not rock and roll. Well, it is rock and roll, but it's early. <laughs> anyway, I got all the boys in and told them to just imagine that they were monks chanting. And then I put a tennis axe over the top of that racket, and that's all there is on this track. So I've got the voices here, and I've got a tennis axe here. And uh, we call this, I call this piece Stillness. And the voices came out slightly flat, slightly under concert pitch. And I always have to remember that. Um, I didn't want to pitch them up because they sounded great. So, because you can do with, with technology, even I can manage to pitch up voices and bring them up to concert pitch. But I didn't want to do that. So, it means I have to pull the mouthpiece off to make the saxophone flat. I also feel a ripe nana. So this is 
stillness. Stillness. Let me see what you're saying. I have my little chat box. Uh, how you found Romancer in an old Russ Shipton book? It's uh, it's written by Anonymous. I'm reliably informed by Wikipedia. So it's a traditional piece. Yeah. <laughs> Danny up in Easington is agreeing with me there ought to be an international recorder crimes tribunal yeah it's a shame I mean the recorder can sound beautiful but it's just not a great first instrument for anybody thank you Yak I'm glad you're enjoying that and your seed that you gave Sally that sounds a bit bad that doesn't it it's um, a lotus flower of some kind isn't it it's going great. It's grown about that much every day. It's fantastic. Ah, look, it's five to eight. One more piece. And then bicycle clips. Down the path home. Ah. Yeah, I love that piece. <coughs> Time Stands Still, available over at the website, as are all the albums. And increasingly they are available as hard copies. Which is the best way to have them, isn't it? Is it? But also they are available as downloads. Because you don't pass the merchandise desk on your way out of the gig and I don't get to shake your hand and give you hugs and things. So virtual hugs, virtual handshakes. Another tune, if you've got time. Well, I'm going to play it anyway. And uh, really hope to see you next Friday. One for the stairs. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, that was what me and, me and Sandhouse Man 
We were having a virtual whiskey last night. We had one extra, one for the stairs instead of one for the road. Yeah, okay, yeah. He's back, look, just right on cue. Richard, <laughs> one for the stairs. Awesome. Uh, okay, I thought I'd do. Some of you guys were talking about Native American flutes and things earlier on, weren't you? Amongst yourselves, you know, when you were having a good old chat. Well, this is a, a Native Indian flute. It's a, the traditional Indian flute, the Bansurai. And uh, a track which I've, I've played once or twice, and it's, it's also on on that same album, the Time Stand Still album. And uh, I've told you the whole story about it, but I won't go over it again. I might do it <laughs> next time. But um, basically... I had a beautiful recording of a storm, well, atmospheric, a storm that happened right out there. And I just happened to have all my recording gear set up at the time. It was the first thing I ever recorded in this room. And uh, I just don't, threw the doors open and put the mics as close as I could to the outside. Um, and, uh, and then I sort of sat on that recording of the weather for a little while. And then after I got this, I tried putting them together, and it worked. So, let's go. Oh, thank you, Yak. Fantastic. Right over my face. Love it. Um, and it worked out nice. So, it had a working title for a long time. Uh, because the flute came, although it's Indian, it came from Sendai, North Japan. So it was called From Mumbai to Sendai for a long time, but now it's called Quiet Storm. So uh, I'll give you that, and I'll say goodbye before I go. So guys, take care of each other. Happy birthday, Joan. I don't know if you're listening, Esther, but happy 21st for tomorrow. Another lockdown baby. And uh, 
Joan and Eastbourne, 49 again. Thank you to Mr. Robin Smith. I'm not thanking that dodgy busker on the guitar. I want to see him again. And a uh, big thank you to Joe, who's been working so hard on this project and getting us back up running more or less smoothly today. We'll get Gareth. We will do it. And uh, back on Friday, I'm going to um, get my buddy Ernie Wood from up there in North Yorkshire back on. We're going to... You remember we re revisited and uh, reworked and performed for you the theme from Jimmy's. Um, there's another track that we worked on eons ago called... Um, it was for a, a, a documentary called Streets of Fire. So we're going to play that for you and tell you the tale that lies behind it. And uh, and maybe uh, reprise, is that the right word? Reprise or reprieve? No, you get a reprieve if you're in jail, don't you? Reprise the Jimmy's theme as well, because that was fun. So I hope to do that next Friday, technology allowing. And uh, if Ernie's available. And we'll have lots of fun. Thank you to all. Thank you, Sally. <coughs> I do look rather smart tonight. Oh, there's a pin in it. No, there's not. Really enjoyed your company. Be kind to each other. Be grateful for what we have. And uh, most of all, take very good care. Thanks for being with me. Spread the word. Give us a like. Give us a subscribe. <laughs> See you soon. You, you guys take care.